Hranenim. Hello, my name is Ryan Eichel. I'm a BSW student here at uh, Hawaii Pacific University, and I did my research study on the uh, uh, creating a cultural intervention curriculum for the Chiquis youth and adolescents population here in Hawaii. So this was an exploratory study. It was using an indigenous framework and also aspects of cultural theory. This was the research question was almost influenced by cultural trauma in my knowledge of native Hawaiians and through other research that I've been a part of the pathway to healing cultural trauma is cultural reclamation. Like, for example, the language values and beliefs and activities that connect a person to their culture and no matter what state they're in or where they are located, it connects them. And so the research question was, how does language values, beliefs, and activities connect the Chiquis population here, living here in Hawaii to the islands of Chuk? And what is consistent through the lens of the cultural practitioners to create a sense of uh, connection to one another? And what can best aid the Chiquis youth and adolescents in feeling connected to their culture, family, and one another? So for this study, it was kind of a little process throughout the semester. It was first done by creating a relationship with a Chiquis cultural practitioner in order to build that trust and build that repertoire in the community. Um, after building the relationship, I asked permission to, uh, from the cultural practitioner in order to do this study and see if it was something that he would be willing to support and uh, willing to put me in contact with other Chiquis cultural practitioners. In doing this, I did qualitative interviews with cultural practitioners. Uh, I aimed for five, but due to time limitations, only two full interviews could be conducted, and the analyzation of the interviews were uh, transcribed, and I used a grounded theory approach to assess the data. Uh, the common themes in the data that I found throughout this process was this collectively agreed upon idea of respect. So I'm not going to butcher the Chiquis words, but basically it's this idea of respect. So paying respect to the heavens, paying respect to the higher ups, to the above, to the ancestors, right? Paying respect to the land, paying respect to the sea, those have such a big impact on feeding and uh, building this, this sustainability for the Chiquis population in Chuk and paying respect to the people of Chuk. So paying respect to one another and also being respectful, which I also found consistent through all of my interviews. Um, I also found this that there's this connection between uh, family and creating this strong family relationships in throughout my interviews. Um, but sometimes living here in Hawaii, it's, it gets lost. And because of the different mindsets between the westernized thinking of the US and the collectivist thinking of the uh, Inchuk. And so it becomes very difficult uh, due to like accessibility issues and um, allowing for for family to really get together outside of just the nuclear family as we see it today, but extended family as well. And then some activities that bond family and community together is, you know, for example, it was fishing. And in one of my interviews, um, the cultural practitioner stated that if you wanna gain knowledge from somebody and you have a, and if you have a question to that you want answers from them, you start hanging around them, you become very observant and you build their trust, you build that relationship. And then through time, you don't just learn the answer to your question, but you learn so much, such a multitude of knowledge. For, his, for one of his examples, he stated that uh, it, was, it was scaling fish. And so then also pounding con, pounding and making con the breadfruit, it was this this idea of community that this idea of coming together in the cookhouse in Chuk and making this and doing this activity, even if you weren't participating in it, you were still there interacting, building those relationships with your fellow community members and family. And then also coming together for birthdays and funerals. It looks different from there to here because of the because of the limitations, as I uh, suggested to accessibility and because of jobs and the, the monetary value in the United States that we put on it. And so for example, in funerals, one of my cultural practitioners stated that here it's all about what monetarily you could give there, right? But in, in Chuk, it's, it's how can I support, how can I help you and what can I aid you in? And then also uh, something that I was surprised about was that a church, going to church was a big aspect of Chuk's cultural practitioners and that, um, that influence had definitely rubbed off in the islands of Chuk. So for the purpose of the study, it was to create a cult uh, cultural curriculum. So for an example right here, I have like a first session. So a gathering circle, having a space where the youth and adolescents can come and really start to build that trust with one another, asking questions such as, how was your day? Uh, where are you from? What island are you from? What clan are you from? And if you could 
have one ancestor here with you, who would it be and why? And that really starts conversations and really gets them to be proud of their culture and who they are as a person. And then going on to that, uh, the curriculum for that day would be building trust with each other and building stronger relationships with one another. Throughout my interviews, um, it was this, this idea of you need to build trust, you need to build that relationship. And something that was surprising to me was that a lot of the Chiquis that are born here, the first generation, feel like they're that bridge between uh, American culture and Micronesian culture. And so one of my cultural practitioners that I interviewed said, I was too American for Micronesian spaces and too Micronesian for American spaces. And a lot of the youth here feel that same type of way. Um, and they and also that sense of pride in who they are and that pride of their being shook was also kind of lost. As you can see down here at the bottom, I have some extra information for you to look over if you choose to. Um, and so due to the limitations of the study, it did have a relatively small N and would benefit from interviews with more Chiquis cultural practitioners who would be willing to, and implications for future research would be looking at this curriculum and seeing if it really does connect families uh, and youth to, and adolescents to their families and their culture and the community that they're part of. And also give, uh, it provides a gateway to more space, more Chiquis spaces in the United States. And so that's all, that's all. I just wanted to say thank you so much, Kini Sao. And I just really wanted to look out and say thank you to everybody who helped me along this way and made it possible for me to be able to do this research study. Mahalo.